CME Group. I'm Eric Wolfman Wilkinson. Let's get in the zone, the cash money zone. Well, basically all the commodities are a little bit lower today with the help of this strong dollar. The dollar is back in the 129 handle, was up in the 130s last week. That was causing a lot of uh, commodity down pressure. Now we're starting to see a lot of dollar strength, but that's not really correlating to the commodities like we would think it would be. Part of the problem is, is we've had in the commodities of the grain room, let's say, We've had record open interest on the long side of this soybean corn all the way through these rallies when the corn was up in an 849 area. Soybeans were about a buck 50 higher than they are now. All of that long open interest has really sent that market higher back. Now we're starting to see a little bit of trail off and the trail off has come, but we haven't seen any panic or any real selling. The calls are still being bought in the corn and in the soybeans. There are also a lot of selling of puts, which gives you the idea that the market still thinks that this market has room to go up. But one of the worst things that can happen when everybody is one way is the, sh the long start getting out and the market starts falling off. We haven't gotten any news or media talking about this. It's just there. And that's one of the worst things that can happen in a trending commodity and or uh, 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 an equity for that matter is when the market is trailing off despite the fact that the fundamentals say that this market goes up. If there's no media, no talk about it, the market really just kind of slowly starts trickling down and falling off. And that's what we're starting to see now. If this corn market goes much below the 740 area, which is what I've been talking about for a while, 739 should be a major support. We've got a lot of put action going on at the $7 mark. That is gonna be defended. That being said, if we can start pressing down towards that $7 mark, you should you could really see a panic and we could flush down to the 77 or uh, sorry, 678 area, which is where we would be covering a gap from the July 4th holiday. Same thing goes for the beans. The beans is a lot further drop. It's down in the 1450s to cover that gap. I don't know that we're necessarily going to see that, but we could because the beans have been coming out with better than expected uh, yields from the farmers that are bringing it in. At the end of this week, we should have about 50% of the corn uh, harvest in. That should give us a good indication as to where our yields are gonna be. So stay tuned for those numbers coming out from uh, the elevators. They'll be talking about that later this week. Now on to oil. Oil is trading around that $90. It really wants to test that $90 area. Again, no news isn't good news for this market. Nobody's talking about the oil sell-off. Oil could get below that $9 or $90 area before we start really seeing any marketable action going on. Now, you know, the volumes are still light. Today is a Monday, so be quick, be nimble. In the S&Ps, we got them trading down below the 1450 area. That 1455 is a key pivot. Anything above that, bulls have gotten control. Anything below that, the bears are in control. Right now, there's a lot of expectation that this market's gonna move higher due to the QE infinity. Uh, well, we could see that mentality, the same thing happen in the equities as we've seen in the corn, a little bit of turn action, a lot of positive uh, media coming out saying that this market could move higher, has a tendency to push a little bit down flush on it as the longs start to cover. So stay tuned for that to see if the 1,450 bulls uh, can take control and push this up or the bears take control and push this down to the 1400 level. That's going to be setting up for this week. All right. If you can't take that, take it easy.